Give it to me. Oh, that kind of looked blown out a little bit. How y'all doing? What's happening? Um, trying to wait for some for it to populate a little bit. I seem very overexposed with this camera. Let me just shift this a little bit to try to. Oh, I know what to do. Hold on, yeah. God damn it. As y'all can see, I'm still trying to get it together, but it's all good. Put these, put this in here. Let me get my swag back. Um, what's the word? How's everyone? How's everyone? Happy Halloween. How y'all doing? I hope y'all can hear me. I'm going to just check to make sure that I'm heard throughout the these nations and stuff, let's see. So my YouTube has been um, kind of tripping out this morning. I was trying to go live, and I ended up going live on on the Young Turks. Okay, there we go. So it looked it look like I, um, maybe for about three seconds I was lightweight famous, you know, because the Young Turks got like four million followers and stuff. But how y'all doing? Happy Halloween. Um, want to let y'all, uh, say happy Halloween. Hopefully y'all doing something good, special. Hey, you know what? If you guys have like pictures of your costumes, y'all can send those here. And, uh, so I can judge them and I can pick like the best costume out. You know, um, what's crazy, uh, is that I never really been the type to celebrate Halloween. The only time I really celebrated Halloween was when I was in like a relationship or something. Normally for some reason, I think um, women may enjoy their holiday more than men. I don't know. That could just be me. Y'all let me know if, if y'all agree with that. I think women really get into Halloween and love dressing up and everything uh, with Halloween. So it it is that day. So I'm going to just um, talk about that a little bit. You know, one of my small, small little pet peeves about Halloween and is... I don't understand, and like I don't think there's nothing wrong with dressing like sexy and things like that. When women want to do that, that's cool. Do it. Obviously, I love it. I, but I, 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 I'm like, to me, it seems like it's Halloween, especially. I mean, not even, but you know, if you if you're already attractive, you get that. You know, you're attractive. I think that on Halloween, you should try to be as ugly as possible. Like it's the day that people don't care that. That you like, they're looking for you to look, you know, messed up and, and gruesome and, and deadly versus, you know, um, old school, you know, cop uniform or something that is more um, sexy. Because I think what's most appealing about Halloween is, is the creativity uh, um, of, of certain costumes. And when it's just a basic uh, costume, I don't know. I just think that you can do better. Like, why not just be. Just just go all out and look as gruesome, as gross as possible because that's what it's for. You know what I'm saying? But that's my little take. But, I mean, that being said, I don't mind <laughs> seeing the other outfits. Uh, but I always think that um, it's good to just, you know, go left when everyone else is going right. But it is Halloween, so happy Halloween. I hope you guys are safe out there. Have fun. Turn up. Uh, just do it. do it safely. Um, I want to see what's trending on Twitter today. So you guys saw the title. So what I'm going to speak on just to give you, um, you know, cause I'm going to probably ramble a little bit is about the, uh, Pro proposition P, uh, some legislation introduced, um, in St. Louis, obviously, um, if you guys have been following the past three weeks, uh, me, Jordan, uh, past three weeks, four weeks, maybe it's been, um, I don't think it's been a month now. So it's, it's close to a month by now, but. We were arrested in St. Louis um, for covering a protest that we had um, nothing to do with organizing or putting together. We were just covering it like we were supposed to um, put in jail and uh, um, being put in jail. We started to see a lot of the uh, or hear about. Well, we saw firsthand the corruption of the police, but but started to hear about 
everything that's going on with certain legislation trying to be passed, lawsuits on the uh, a lot of um, police officer uh, conduct um, uh, in St. Louis, which I'm speaking of St. Louis City, which is different from St. Louis County um, right now. It's kind of hard to articulate because I'm still trying to wrap my head around it a little bit. And I haven't looked at it much to really be able to articulate. But it's, it's, a, it's a difference, which actually um, is something. Uh, in part, I know a lot of people think that, that, we, that St. Louis City should be part of St. Louis County, which I think would do a lot more for uh, the resources that they would receive and things like that. So that's what we'll be talking about in a second. But, um, yeah... Uh, I wanted to just see what was, I was checking out Twitter, and as you guys already know today, um, what's cracking on the news? Is this live right here? Uh, CNN, which, yeah, I know I hate, no reason for Trump to endorse, okay, so that's Sarah Huckabee just, I mean Sarah Sanders, I said Sarah Huckabee, just talking nonsense, but um, I want to see what's trending on Twitter Bad Moms, Christmas, Halloween, Andy Dick fired from indie film over sexual harassment claims. Jesus Christ. Boy, you got to be, got to watch the conduct out there, man. Y'all tripping. Um, John Kelly in the Civil War. What the fuck? I don't know if you guys saw this, but John Kelly uh, uh, had an interview um, last night. Um, and they asked them, I guess they were talking about the monument, the Confederate monuments that, you know, people have been protesting and, and trying to, um, you know, take down um, and not be celebrated. Um, so he weighed in on it, which I thought was absurd. Like, why fuel a fire that, you know, it's it's not necessary. Like certain questions just leave alone. You already know what that's going to. Uh, oh, it is Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Yes, yeah, so I was right. Um, so. Um, he said that the reason, first he said that, um, General Lee was an honorable, he called him an honorable soldier. An honorable man is what he called him. This is the guy that was part of the Confederate, the, uh, general. Um, he was honorable and his reasonings behind that was because he went against his country for a state because, Back in those days, state was more important than country. You know, it baffles my mind how certain people can rationalize things. Like, really? Really? And then the reason, and then to go further, the reason why he's twinning is the reason, he said, the reason for the Civil War was because lack of compromise. Uh, really? Really? Or was it immoral lack? Uh, was it an immoral compromise? You know, you know, slaves were considered three fourths of a person, and that unfortunately went against the ideas of what America wanted to be. Uh, and you know, people said, "Well, hey, if we were trying to be our best, then we need to make everyone equal." And that's what he went against. And for you to use that as a as a way of justifying why he should be celebrated, are you serious? I guarantee. That was any person of color, period, point blank. It would have been treason. He went against the country. You just you wouldn't have any understanding for that. But for some reason, when it comes to slavery, there 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 were good slave owners. What the fuck? There were good slave owners. Shouldn't be <laughs> to even say that is such an oxymoron to me. There were good slave owners. There were good people who owned other people, and only beat the shit out of them when they were. You know, not acting right. They told him three times to sit down and pick that cotton. Come on. Ah, I wish, man, because, you know, you kind of wanted him to be that someone that would have some sense in Jesus Christ. I don't know. That's uh, trending on Twitter right now. It's been tr trending all morning. And I know you guys know that. I think today starts, um, I think, Twitter, Google, and... Twitter, Google, and Facebook are going to be, um, I think, throughout today and tomorrow, speaking with Congress about the um, uh, collusion with Russia, or, or 
the uh, the fake news, uh, what they call, call quote unquote fake news that was um, that was sent out via social media to 128 million um, uh, citizens. Uh, they said, I guess, it initially the ads and the ads that were put on Facebook by um, the Russian government initially only reached uh, 28 million. And due to, uh, you know, likes and things going viral and sharing, it reached um, 128 million. And, you know, I mean, we all know if you guys use Facebook, YouTube, reach doesn't necessarily mean people saw it. It means it hits people timeline, which, you know, it's neither. It could they could have watched it. It could have not have watched it. You know, whatever. The reach makes it seem, you know, bigger. Make it seem like makes it seem like you're doing more, but that doesn't necessarily um, uh, uh, convert to actual views um, at all. And so, uh, yeah. So they're um, uh, speaking with Congress. I just I honestly don't, you know, whatever. It may. I look at it like this: the Russian government didn't pull a gun in anyone's head and walk them to the voting booth and say vote for Donald Trump or don't vote for Hillary Clinton, um, you know, or vote for Jim Stein. And, you know, people, the American people went and did that on their own. You know, yeah, we know that information does influence, but man, information and actions influence people. You know what I'm saying? Because outside of whatever information you read, you can go and see, you know, their actions. Hillary Clinton has been in the game for years, for centuries, I mean, it's centuries, for decades. And she's, you know, she, she has a timeline, you know, and she just was a person that just didn't know how to, um, to kind of admit the things that she was wrong in. Like everyone changes their mind. Like people love and respect genuine people. If you know you were going down the wrong road and then me, of course, you're like, Hey, Ah, I had this idea. I've grown. I've evolved. Now I'm over here. And you say that people can respect that. But if you continue to hide behind whatever ego you have to say, I've never had those. Things. My my how I you know, my stance have stayed has been the same for 30 and 40 years when we know that's not true. This is not 1995. People can look that stuff up and get it like this. You can't. I know politics are they're usually able to. Um, hide things and I think especially the old guard like what happens they're so used to this way of living and way of doing things in Washington D.C. that they don't even think before they lie and they just lie thinking well this is you know this is kind of what I've been doing all my life so that's that's kind of innate for them not understanding like it's 2017 player I can look that up and find out if you lying or not um, anyway that that's me. I, I just I just I think it's it's kind of I don't know if it's a waste of time. You never know. I mean, it was it was in Nixon's. Um, I doubt if Trump is going to be impeached. If he is, then hey, good for everyone. But it was in Nixon's second term that he finally resigned before his impeachment. And they found out about Watergate during his first term. So this shit takes a while. Just take years. Just take building up cases because normally what happens is things happen. You find out things and things start to unfold. People get hot, get their backs pushed against the wall and start flipping. So um, if you're waiting for that to happen anytime soon, don't hold your breath, player. Keep living and keep uh, resisting. And if it happens, it happens. If it don't, make sure your ass is involved in the 2018-2020 elections so that we can make sure that um, you know, nothing like this uh, happens again and we continue to move forward as a country. Bam. That's my rant for today and all its and all the tweets and, and, and the news that's going on. Yeah, Robert E. Lee, uh, leaders have flaws. Leaders have flaws. Interesting. Jesus Christ. So I'm just reading a quote. Um, from General Kelly said, leaders have flaws. That bothers me. He said another thing that mirrored the same exact sentiment that Trump said after the Charlottesville incident. He, uh, uh, General Kelly said, there were good people on both sides. I swear to God, if you, if you listen to what he said verbatim, the exact same quote that Trump used, and to me it was kind of dog whistling. I'm like, why? 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 Ah, uh, I want people to be good sometime, and it's so disappointing. Like, 
why would you say if you watch it, he says it exactly how Trump said it. There were good people on both sides. There were bad people on both sides. He said that same sentiment and it just irked the shit out of me. Ugh. But, um, you know, whatever, man. He just, John Kelly, you know. After he told that story about his son, man, you kind of like, ah, I appreciate you being transparent and vulnerable with us. And you kind of, you know, we're human. Shit, we want people to be right and be good and look out for the interest. And if you think that statement and what you said in that interview, uh, uh, General Kelly is looking out for the citizens of America, you're just uh, sorely mistaken, man. And I'm at the, I can't feel you on that. I'm bothered by it, actually, because I kind of have some faith in you. You know, when you put somebody somewhere and they, like, let you down, you're like, uh, you know, Trump can't let me down because, hey, you know, it is what it is. You know, but when you, it's disappointing. It's Jesus Christ. So anyway, back to St. Louis, St. Louis. Uh, so. Like I said initially um, when I started this video, I wanted to talk about Prop uh, P, which is um, legislation introduced um, uh, to. Uh, so. What they're putting out there is they're saying this is for public safety. This is uh, this this uh, 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 tax hike. Uh, so what, what they want to do is have uh, St. Louis uh, Proposition P introduces a uh, half cent. Uh, sales tax um, in, in, in St. Louis, which will then generate $19.5 million a year for public safety. Uh, and um, this is something that uh, how it's been promoted, like it's for public, you know, you know, you think about the general, this public safety. So, hey, public safety, what, is, what does that actually mean to you, um, St. Louis? Because when I hear public safety, I think, oh, okay, public safety. I mean, they may have more police. Uh, public safety mean um, uh, more community centers. Uh, public safety to me means more job availability. Uh, public safety safety to me means better training in the police department. You know, uh, well, you know, public safety actually to me means revolutionizing the police department like breaking that shit down and starting over because i think it's far too corrupt to try to uh, adjust you know we need to start over but those are the things when i when i think of public safety i think of those things um what does st louis think of public safety well i think that you can kind of tell by where the money has been allocated that will always kind of give you a better understanding of what public safety actually means to um to the party who's introducing uh, this proposition. So the half cent sales tax will um, raise their sales tax. Well, mind you, let me tell you this. So St. Louis uh, is the fourth, uh, St. Louis City. So like I said earlier, there's a difference between St. Louis County and St. Louis City. Um, and that's something that uh, I have to um, get more information about, but there's a, there's a huge difference. So St. Louis, Poverty rate is 24.9 percent of the population. This is their population is 300, 315,685 people uh, in that in that city, and so that's you know that's 29 percent. That's probably that's 24 uh, percent. That's high. We can say 25 because it's 24.9. That's a high percentage rate of poverty, and this has nothing. To, this is part. This has. Nothing to do with um, what well, could have something to do. A lot of times when they say poverty rate, they don't think about like like a below living wage rate. Like they try to like lump everyone that may not have a job or may be making eight dollars an hour or or less than eight, like five in St. Louis. They're they're all fuck. I think they went back down to seven. Like that's a good rate, but that's the poverty rate. Like if you're not making at least. 15 to 20 dollars an hour you can't support yourself let alone support a family so this is the fourth um, fourth state in the fourth city in America with the uh, the largest poverty rate so hiking up their tax will really affect like poor people you know that half of that half a cent kind of sounds uh, well that's not a lot it really is it takes it it takes it, it makes it the third 
uh, highest tax city in a nation, period, under uh, Chicago and, uh, well, it'll actually, St. Louis, it'll be under Chicago and, um, and it'll be L.A., Chicago, then St. Louis. That's how it'll go. And then New York City will be under St. Louis. And, you, and if you think about that, you know, St. Louis, like I said, St. Louis City only has 315,000 people. Chicago has two million, I mean almost three million, LA four million, and um New York City uh four point I mean eight point five million in the population. So that if that kind of gives you some context. Um so this actually affects more poor people than anything, this tax rate, this high tax rate. And I think they just raised the tax recently, uh earlier this year for um I think it has something to do with the, what do they call it? The business, the business use tax, the business use tax. So let me break this down right now. So there, you know, that the uh, proposition P is a proposition to raise tax half, half, a, half a cent a year, which will generate $19.5 million. So 12.8 million, you can say 13 million is, will go to the police department. Um, 5.4 million will go to the fire department and 1.5 million will go to the circuit, uh, attorney's office. Now, so that's, that's all the 19, that 1%, that's the, that's the, that's the entire 19, um, the 19% tax, tax raise that they're talking about. That all, that, that's where that money's going. So you got, so I, um was listening to last night just to try to get some clarity of of uh this I'm sorry, give me one second, remind tomorrow, okay. I was I was doing some research to get some clarity and the uh, police chief Lawrence O'Toole had an interview uh on the radio with um St. Louis it was a local radio station, uh uh St. Louis Public Radio and who was he talk speaking with let me see if I can find this. Okay, it was a uh, Mark Reardon show, the Mark Reardon show. Here, Reardon's conversation with O'Toole. Uh, and this was uh, October twenty fourth, so it's about seven days ago that um, he had this interview. And so I went in trying to see exactly what he was talking about as far as the tax rate, what it would do. I'm thinking, okay, does this tax rate um, offer um, better training, like? to um help police deal with you know mentally ill um uh uh excuse me citizens um appropriately uh does it does it um give uh better evaluations to incoming police officers just coming out the academy uh, uh how does it affect training um i'm sure it's going to affect salary i kind of assume that anytime you have this large amount of money, it's, it has something to do with salary. So I just, I came in thinking that, but like, what else does it do? What does it do for the community? Because, um, you know, in the article I read, it said, uh, it talked about the 12 million. Then it said $3.9 million. Um, that money will go towards after school programs, middle health care, and more. This is what it says. This is, this is the same article, uh, from, um, what is this? CBS St. Louis. Uh, so CBS St. Louis um, with this uh, um, radio personality, uh, Mark Reardon, who uh, seems to be in favor of everything blue. Um, so it, that, so I, I'm reading this article. It, it talks about, it says, of the estimated $9.5 million generated from half-cent tax hike, $12.8 million will go towards police raises, but millions would also go to a fire departments and circuit attorney offices, and subsequent uh, use tax um, would generate $3.9 million. So this is a whole nother tax lane, actually. So that, that will uh, generate another Three point nine million. That money will go towards school programs, mental health care, and more. Some money will also be used for abandoned building demolition. So to to um to you know uh, uh, tear down buildings. You know all like all and 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 I think in in, in efforts to uh, gentrify 
uh, and, and privatize, period. Or privatize and gentrify, if I can speak linearly. Um, so, just to get back on track. So, like I said, out of the 19 million, out of 19 million is the sales tax. That's what will be generated each year on this half a percent raise. And then you have the half a percent, the half a cent tax height on the business use tax. So, two different things, right? And the business use tax will generate. 3.9 million a year. So we have the sales tax that generates 19.5 million and the uh, business use tax that generates 3.9 million. So like I said, go just, just going to start over a little bit. So out of the 19.5, you got 12, which is a th which is two thirds, mind you, two thirds of the 19.5 million will go to the police. 5.4 will go to uh fire department. They have an agreement. So if the if the police department gets a raise, the fire department has to get a raise as part of uh, uh, the agreement with the unions. Um, I don't know much about it. Uh, I, you know, I kind of like kind of breezed over it just so I can get a better understanding. And then 1.5 is going to the circuit attorney. So this is all literally for tax raises. Um, uh, uh, the police chief, uh, Lawrence O'Toole, said um, in this interview uh, with Mark that this is to compete with the county, with St. Louis County. So I guess St. Louis County introduced uh, similar legislation at the beginning of the year, which passed, which um, uh, brought the salary rates up in St. Louis County. And so what started to happen is that some of the police officers uh, from St. Louis City moved to St. Louis County when positions were open because they start you off with a higher rate. And so this tax raise is specifically to compete with St. Louis County. Specifically, this is what this is what um, Chief Lawrence O'Toole told this um, told the radio station told uh, Mark Mark Reardon um, on on an interview on October twenty fourth, two thousand seventeen. That this is exactly what this for. For the fire department, 12.8. For the police department, 5.4. For the fire department, 1.5. For the circuit attorney. All that money is for nothing about training, nothing, nothing about resources, nothing about community centers. This is all for uh, uh, a raise in efforts to compete with other uh, municipalities. Um, so... How do I feel about that? Um, I, well, let me just say I spoke to uh, um, Corey Bush uh, yesterday. We spoke on the phone and she said no. She said until they start to um, make the public safer, they don't need a raise. They said they, 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 they don't deserve a raise. If they're not protecting and serving, why should we give a raise is incentive. Normally when people uh, receive raises, it's because they did a good job, everything was good this quarter, or everything good this year since you've been here. This has happened. I'll receive a raise. If views go up, if our reach goes further, this is what happens depending on you know what 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 type of job you're doing. It's, it, it's all about performance. You know what I'm saying? And if your performance isn't right and your performance isn't satisfactory to the people you're performing for, Right? The person I'm performing for is Jordan and Jank. If they don't feel that I'm doing what I need to do, we're not talking about a race. It's not going to happen. I'm going to have to shift gears, do something different to make this happen where then they can see and it's evident that what I'm doing is actually uh, benefiting the company in a positive way. The police works for the people. So if the people don't see that the police or they disagree with the police, um, the, the idea, the notion of the police doing a great job in policing and protecting and serving, then they should not at all. I think it's, I think it's, I think, I think that um, if you want to raise, then it should come from the people. And I think what uh, it's going on in St. Louis right now, as far oh, and this is something else that he that 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 uh, that Chief O'Toole. Uh, mentioned on in in his interview is that we're losing police officers. He said when people have a protest, we have to 
uh, deploy all these police officers to these protests. And then that leaves some neighborhoods vulnerable, that's what it said. And also that police officers are um, moving to different municipalities, which seems to be kind of what the protesters would like to see happen, I would, I would assume. that Because what I got from, from Chief O'Toole is that, look, they're messing with the money. We don't have the resource. We have to send police officers here, and then it's vulnerable here. We need more manpower. Right now, we're down. I think they're down 148, if I'm not mistaken. Just let me get the number. Right, 114 officers. That they're short. 114 officers. Officers that that has left, went to the county, or went went to somewhere else where they could be paid better, treated better. Who really knows? All uh, the nuances behind the officer leaving. Sometimes they leave because they have inappropriate conduct and they don't get fired. They just get transferred. So that could be a reason also. So it's a lot of reasons why a police officer will move from one to another jurisdiction. Um, but his, his explanation, what he was explaining is that, you know what, these protesters are really, um, you know, interrupting the flow and we need more resources. And to me, it seems like that's kind of what that's the intention, right? Is that we want to, I'm assuming that the protesters want to disrupt. They want to let you know that we're in control. We're the people. So if you're not treating us right, if you're not treating us as human beings, then you're not going to get a pay raise. The, we, yeah, you know, we're going to dry your resources out until you open your eyes and start to open your ears and listen to what we're saying. Because it's valid. And then until you acknowledge that and then take action to prevent police shootings, in-house raids for assumptions, just all, it's like the wild, wild west there. They just really do what they want to do. And like, I mean, y'all saw the arrest. They really just like, you're going to jail. And, and let me tell you this. I was a little, I was a little arrogant thinking. I'm like, I'm not, I'm I knew I wasn't going to jail because I was impressed. I had my press pass. I'm like, you ain't talking to me. I'm not going to jail. And I, I stayed standing for a little bit because I'm like, you is it's just not possible. That's against the law. And you enforce that law. So how can you? So if you're enforcing the law, but hey, sometimes I can, as, as, as many times I've been fucked with by the police. For some reason, I thought my credentials was going to like overshadow my blackness. It didn't. So, um, it seems like, uh, anyway, to go back, it seems like that what the police, what the uh, protesters are doing are actually affecting uh, the police uh, um, um, productivity uh, and, 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 and hindering and keeping away from their resources. So this tax, this tax hike will then, it, it really, that's all it does. It, it, it gives them, it will give the, um, the police officers a $6,000 increase a year. So I, right now they're making 48 uh, with this tax raise, it'll go to 54k, uh, and then the additional money. And that's that's six thousand six thousand dollars for each incoming like like starting rate for a police officer in St. Louis City, and the additional money, uh, the 12 million, will then go to uh, equipment, tear gas, things like that. Nothing in this talks about nothing in this talks about training. Nothing. There's nothing that mentions this money going for training. It's all about resources to be able to continue to brutalize people. So this is a tax that is not deserving. I It seemed like if the people of St. Louis will start to receive um, the proper protection, not policing, but protection from their government, um, and their elected officials, I'm sure that they would. Uh, I think that they would. They would help support um, a, 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 a pay raise uh, with the police officers. Why wouldn't they? If if the police officers were doing their job, but they're not. Um, so proposition P. None of the money goes to. Okay, so let me just go to the bottom part. So now there's another tax uh, tax hike, which is in the business use tax. And I think that has to do with a lot of buying out of state tax and things like that. I'm really, I, I kind of breezed over it. But when you read like, when you, like the articulation of taxes, that stuff is just like, you got to sit there and think for a second. 
So, uh, yeah. Um, so the biz, but you guys can look up business use tax. Um, uh, like I said, I breezed over it. I know it has to do with, with buying out of state tax and things like that. And so, and you could tell, you know, how much, how much, uh, how much, uh, it generates by, um, or how much the tax is actually implemented by how much it will, uh, how much it produces a year you have 19.5 million which is the the sales tax which that's how much that half a percent will produce a year 19.5 million and with the the business use tax it only produces 3.9 million now out of that three point we can say four million dollars out of that 3.9 million dollars um 75 thousand will go to after school uh services and and, and community centers Another seventy-five thousand will go to mental health, and another—I mean, another nine hundred and seventy-five thousand will go to mental health, and another nine hundred and seventy-five thousand. Let's see what they're saying. Okay, holy smokes, wrap it up. <laughs> All right, I gotta wrap it up. I tell you, you're killing it, but wrap it up. Okay, thirty minutes, holy smokes. All right, so I gotta wrap it up. So anyway, just let me wrap it up. So they have the three point nine million business uh, use tax. So. Out of that 3.9 million, you have 975,000 is for after school programs, 975,000 is for mental health uh, issues, uh, and that's for the public, uh, not mental health evaluations for police officers. And 975 is for building demolition, tear down buildings, start to rebuild, privatizing really is, is, is what it's for. So you have 19 million going for. Police officers for pay raises for uh, equipment, nineteen point five million, and for the community, three point what is that? Twenty five percent? What three 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 three, three fourteen? What not nah, twenty five? Maybe thirty percent? Probably nah. I would say fifteen percent. Yeah, it's four million. You know, four and twenty five. Twenty five percent. Let's say twenty five percent. That's twenty five. So the business use tax only generates 25% of what the sales tax will generate per year. And that's what then they're dividing that into thirds to after school care. And we always know that certain money get reallocated and the, the after school programs more than likely won't see that 975K. Mental health may not see that whole that whole 975K. And um Building demolition, they probably received that because they know they can make money off of privatizing certain areas. So I think that's what they're going to do. But that's what's going on right now. The The vote is November 7th um, uh, in St. Louis. It's November 7th. So I think uh, it seemed that it's, um, it's something that people of St. Louis should definitely be looking out for and, and um, rallying people. It seemed like this, is, this, is a, this will be a game changer if this... This bill, whether it pass or not, will be will really turn the wheel um, uh, as far as the community services. Normally, when things don't pass, what happens? They go back. They 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 start to uh, reevaluate the situation, add things, take away things, look at the complaints about it, and then reintroduce it. Is if, if if somehow this doesn't pass, they may start to uh, listen to their constituents. And see what they actually really want. So um, that's my spiel for the day. I'm going to go ahead and call it quits. You guys enjoy your holiday. Um, your Halloween. Like I said, be safe. Have fun out there. Chill with your girl. Uh, I'll be in. Um, or your boyfriend. I'll be in D.C. on Friday, on, on Thursday. And New York on Saturday. So I'll be with Nomiki. Uh, um, doing a couple interviews. So I'll see uh, you next. Oh, mind you, this is this is a thing we're calling Tie Tuesdays. Normally, Tie Tuesdays is me and Jordan, but I'm doing it right now just because I'm in L.A. and he's in New York. So, but Tie Tuesday seems like it's gonna be a thing. So we're gonna try to keep it at 30 minutes from now on and um, do it like that. So you guys be safe out there, have fun, and um, make it home so you can see tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>